bird sang this song to me There was a message in his melody Sweetest lyrics that I ever heard There's a message in the songs of earth He said, tomorrow is another day Living is the only way Tomorrow's gonna ever come Listen to the words of the song Everything gonna be Everything is gonna be Greetings and welcome to A Sip of Inspiration. I'm Stephanie Wilson and I'm your host for tonight's show. There is a line in a song written by Sweet Honey and the Rock that says, he who believes in freedom will not stop until it's done. I believe freedom should include but not be limited to our civil rights. And in order to live a healthy, prosperous life, there are facets of our physical and mental well-being that are in our direct control. Some of the things that we have the ability to control no matter our circumstances are teen pregnancy, addiction, financial poverty or prosperity, preventable diseases such as hypertension and diabetes and obesity. Last month we talked about teen sexuality, abstinence, education and preparation. Tonight I've assembled a panel to discuss addiction. Now addiction is defined as a compulsive need for something. That something could be drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex, eating, working. So during the next hour, with the help of the viewers at home, we will explore various phases of addictions from how do you know when you have a problem to where you can get help. I believe that once we can rid our lives of debilitating activities that are within our control, we will see our finances improve, our families healed and uplifted, our neighborhoods made whole, in our lives more prosperous than we ever believed possible. Joining me for tonight's show is Tyrone Reed, Carol Cherry, Anthony Gordon, Justine Santori, and Reverend Jacqueline Lee. Now we're going to start with Tyrone and let you guys take a few seconds or minute and introduce yourself. Tell the audience a little bit about you before we get started. Uh, so I'm Tyrone Lee and actually I'm honored to be here. Uh, just to be able to give uh, the insight that I have from my experiences in life on addiction and what it consists of and hopefully that I can help someone to not get caught up in the things of addiction can, can bring to you. Thank you. Okay. And I'm Harold Cherry. Um, I work with the Southside Health Center and I've been there for about 15 years doing uh, substance abuse prevention among other things. I'm Anthony Gordon, and I have 17 years' experience in addiction counseling. Uh, I'm currently working on a prevention program called CATS, Canine Assisted Therapy, with Woodlawn Animal Hospital and Canine Academy, where we're going to work focus on prevention with teens. Hi, I'm Justine Santora. I have 15 years in the field of HIV and substance abuse at a nonprofit organization. My name is Minister Jacqueline Lee. And I currently work for a non-for-profit organization for at-risk at risk youth. And I also have experience in the prevention department as well. Okay. Thank you all for joining me. I know <coughs> that uh, getting everybody together in one place and having you clear your schedule, if it's anything like mine, was just horrific. And it's an honor for me to have you here. Thank you. But the first thing I want to do is bust the myth that addiction consists of simply drugs, and alcohol. I'd like the viewers at home to know that addiction consists of lots of things. There's uh, eating disorders. Absolutely. There's gambling, mm -hmm. and that's a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, there's sex addictions. There's pornography. Uh, there's even now a joke in the corporate workplace of addictions to blackberry. We actually call it the crackberry. You know, mm -hmm. imagine that. Mm -hmm. I know, it's, but you just can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, this little thing literally controls your life, yeah. you know. So we want, I want people to understand that first. And then we're going to go, I want to talk about how do you know when you have a problem? What are some of the first signs? And this is long before your life's falling apart. How do you know? What are some of the first signs? Uh, here's one that most people can relate to, uh, cell phone addiction. Cell phone addiction. When you get a bill that reaches three, four, five hundred dollars in a month, yes. you have a problem. And that's one that most people can relate to, young and old. Young and old. But when, when it gets to that point, you realize you have a problem. That's one that everybody can relate to. 
Well, there's a spending addiction, too, because I do financial stuff. The mm -hmm. first time you get a credit card bill in the mail mm -hmm. and you can't pay the balance in full, mm -hmm. you have a problem. Yes, yes. Yeah. Regardless of the balance, you mm -hmm. have a problem. <coughs> and if you deal with it right then, mm -hmm. the problem won't escalate it. But if you wait until, like I did, till I hit rock bottom, about $65,000, and that then unemployed, then homeless, mm -hmm. then you really have a problem. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so it's also one that um, a lot of, uh, well, I won't limit it to women, but shopping has been mm -hmm. one of the bigger ones that I've noticed, uh, spending beyond your means mm -hmm. or your limitations mm -hmm. that causes uh, uh, financial hardships on the family month after month, week after week, but putting yourself in direct position uh, to feed the need to buy whatever it is that you feel that you need to do it. So I've, I've noticed that a lot with uh, several, several of the women that I've shared with lately. Mm -hmm. Another ahead. component that um, I'm reminded of was listening to the panel is the loss of control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Loss of control in spite of the consequences. And um, I'm thinking of a story, a personal story of mine with mm -hmm. um, food. And Hagen Dazs ice cream. Mm -hmm. You're making me crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, uh, working in the treatment program, uh, and one night uh, I had decided I'm gaining all this weight. I'm not going to eat any more Hagen Dazs ice cream. And but I had a half of it in the refrigerator, so I threw it away. And of course, as hours went by, it melted. But then. That, that compulsion that they mm -hmm. talk about in addiction. That compulsion came over me, and I went in the trash can, got the melted haagen and was soup, drink, eating it like soup. Oh, wow. Mm. And, the, and I knew, I said, now this is crazy, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. But that's that, you know, that loss of control. But the, uh, in spite of the consequences piece, is that I moved to the state of Minnesota some years ago, and I was angry one night. And I r depended on the food to, to help me work through emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the neighborhood or anything like that. In the middle of the night, I searched for Hagen Dazs ice cream and pulled up in a drug-infested neighborhood, rolled down my window, and a guy ran up to me and said, how many you want? You know, like I was buying drugs. I said, do you know where I can get some Hagen Dazs? <laughs> 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 so this was really dangerous right. and just kind of outlandish, but it was the driving force of addiction for food that had me put my life at risk or some ice cream. Absolutely. And I can really relate to what Anthony's saying because it's just the need to fill a void. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's used, whatever substance, be it shopping or gambling, it's really an internal need in the spirit to feel something that is not there. Mm -hmm. And we use that, and then okay. we think that it's that. But once you start the process of healing, you find that it's something greater that you were searching for to place, replace that void. Mm -hmm. So the addiction itself is just the effect. Mm -hmm. There are a variety of causes. Absolutely. Yeah, there, there's something underneath. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. When you all have worked with people, what do you generally find underneath? We talked about uh, the need to fill a void. What are some of the other things that you find underneath? Um, basically, during, during my studies, I believe that uh, there are personal issues okay. that take effect, uh, whether it be uh, family issues or issues on the job or issues with our mates that tend to have us seeking something outside of that to help us feel better about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we don't feel better about ourselves, we look for something mm -hmm. that can help us in that. And a lot of times it has a, a negative aspect, so we have to kind of reverse that thing okay. and with the addiction and get something positive to fill that negative void. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you find, though, in teenagers who don't have access to, say, credit cards or cash to fill the void through shopping and some of those other means? Mm -hmm. What are you finding in teenagers? What voids are they filling, and how do they do it? Loneliness. Okay. Um, I would say... From my experience working with teenage youths, mm -hmm. um, fear, acceptance, um, wanting to belong mm -hmm. and be a part of, mm -hmm. those are some peer pressure. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the um, components that teenagers today deal with, wanting to fit in. Okay. Yes. 
You know. Well, that doesn't seem to go away because adults are saying the same Absolutely. thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And maybe it even begins um, as a child I and is carried so. right on through adulthood. Okay. In some, I in, think in some so. Cases. Yeah. Some of the pressures um, are not just limited to peers. Mm -hmm. um, I, I worked with a, a, a young man once who uh, was the youngest of a family of six. And I think his, the closest sibling to him was 10 years his senior. Mm -hmm. And he had the pressure throughout his life not to be like your brothers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His brothers mm -hmm. were violent and, mm -hmm. and criminals, basically. And he had the pressure not to be like his brothers. And that pressure drove him to drink and to mm -hmm. act out in, in school, et cetera, et cetera. So Rebellion. the pressure came from his parents, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and oftentimes, parents aren't aware of, of the level of pressure that they put on some of their child with expectations, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think one of the things we have to do early on is, is one, be aware and look for boys when we're dealing with our youth because, you know, that way you have an opportunity. We talked about preparation mm -hmm. before. It's to prepare them for some of those things. And peer pressure, <coughs> of course, is major. And that forces them into a lot of things and wanting to belong. Um, we talked about earlier when we talked about running trains or sexual activities, this, that, and mm -hmm. the other, and wanting to belong. And a lot of them fall victim um, in terms of wanting to belong. So it's about looking early on and trying to identify those boys and find ways to fill them. How mm -hmm. early should you start and what should you do? <laughs> when, when, you, when you look at it, uh, it's, it's like when you start <coughs> early, it's not... It's just monitoring and watching okay. and, and, and understanding. And, that, and that's the biggest part about parenting. You know, there ain't no book. We've all had our experiences yes. and there's no book. So it's, it's just time. really monitoring, watching your children, see what they're doing. And, and again, it's, it's, I used to do this with my boys all the time. Is I would encourage them to tell on one another mm -hmm. secretly. And the reason I did that was <laughs> not to make them a telltale because I can't watch them 24-7 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. exactly. when they're with one another. So exactly. when something is not going right, they would always come and say, Dad, blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, don't tell them I told you. And I'd be like, I ain't going to say a word. <laughs> but this was a way that I was able to monitor different mm -hmm. behaviors and then maybe do some intervention with them before it really became a major problem. So it's just monitoring, you mm -hmm. know, different behaviors as they come along. And nice. actually, I was having a conversation earlier um, because it's the parents' job to instill uh, morals and values in their children. But once the children leave the household, mm -hmm. then um, society plays a role in helping to nurture that child, whether it be school, or after school program, and things of that nature. And the ba bottom line is we have to instill certain values in our children so that they can make the right choices and not do a lot of things that say, I've done in my life, mm -hmm. share my experience mm -hmm. with them so they can choose a different route. Mm -hmm. okay. This is, this is um, what Mr. Lee is saying is leading right into the, the concept of um, uh, motivational enhancement type therapy okay. mm -hmm. where um, the parents, rather than uh, the pressure that I mentioned earlier, uh, tell the child what not to do, who not to be like, and put that type of pressure on the child, uh, the concept suggests that you encourage the child to be the individual that he or she is mm -hmm. and uh, highlight the uh, mm -hmm. assets and attributes of that child. And those things in parenting will help uh, prevent mm -hmm. the void to uh, occur in, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We'd like to, I just want to invite our callers to call in. Mm -hmm. uh, the number is 312-738-1845. It'll be on the bottom of the screen and we'll take all questions. Don't be shy. This is never a show where you have to be polite. Okay, Jackie. You know, being a teenager, it's a very awkward stage. I mean, you're, you're not a child as in baby, and you're crossing over to young ladyhood or young manhood. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, it's really just a natural process of life, the desire to feel connected, the, the desire to belong. I think that God created us to be together and to have that passion on the inside to want to be a part of something but as my uh, Mr. Lee said my husband as he said <laughs> that it is a very important uh, thing to instill certain morals and values in the children because I'm not one of those people that believes that it's society's responsibility I think that I should uh, give my children something of a map and different signs to look for as they enter mm -hmm. into a society so they can know what stumbling blocks to cross over because there will be stumbling blocks. Mm -hmm. Now, 
when they're teenagers, how do we prepare? Because now you have a lot of control up until <laughs> they become fairly mobile and they're teenagers. <laughs> and then they're just out there or they think they're out there. Mm -hmm. I think I think one of the things is to make sure that they have a clear understanding. And when okay. I say that, because a lot of times when they get in and we're talking about substance abuse, when we start talking about they have a, a, a distorted sense of what's right and what's wrong. When we talk about the use of marijuana, the use of alcohol, and a lot of times, oftentimes, they don't know enough about it. When we talk about clear concepts, and right. this is a gateway drug we often talk about, yes. and most people who do other drugs start it here. Okay, so and that's what we mean by gateway drugs. Mm -hmm. Yes. It okay. Door. It because some people think that if they smoke a little marijuana so or have mm -hmm. or drink, then mm -hmm. they're not in danger of anything. Right. It's just mm -hmm. a little marijuana and it's just a little drink. Right, mm -hmm. but that's the thing. When you start talking about addiction and knowing when there's a problem, Okay. This is one of the things I have a debate with my young people all the time because one of the things they talk about is this is natural. Well, it's no longer natural. If it ever was, it isn't anymore because they do so many different things to process it. So it's no longer natural. But one of the okay. things that we often debate about is the fact that they don't look at I say if you if you take half this room and they shoot dope. Okay. And you take half this room and they smoke weed. They will call them dope fiends. And mm -hmm. the thing that I want them to understand that it's all dope. And this is the thing they don't think about. Normally when they start, they can take two hits and they'll be high. But as it progresses, it's four hits. It's a half a joint. Now they're sitting around in circles. And then you tell them to stop. And that's when the debate starts because everybody can stop when they want. And that's the thing that they have to look for when you start talking about how do you recognize or identify if, in fact, right. there's a problem. Try stopping. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you'll be able to see this wow. even go uh, uh, even further when it gets to the point where you have to do this thing in order to function okay. is what your daily chores are. Mm -hmm. Before you can go to the washroom, you got to have a this <laughs> or that. Before you can get dressed, before you go to work, even going to work, mm -hmm. you got to have this thing. And uh, addiction, another definition for addiction is anything that you do habitually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we tend to uh, get away from the habit form okay. of what addiction is. I think also in society, we seem to separate our addictions. There are addictions mm -hmm. that are just as debilitating because they're financially debilitating, Absolutely. like gambling Absolutely. and, you know, and eating, mm -hmm. you know. But they're not necessarily physically debilitating mm -hmm. all the time. And mm -hmm. I think in society, we tend to separate the two. I guess yes. you could have one that's okay and one that's not okay you know we're big on that so mm -hmm. what's the difference and how do you deal with that because an addiction is an addiction Absolutely. if there's something you cannot do without mm -hmm. it's an addiction. It is an whether addiction. it is shooting dope or ice cream mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. you got a problem right mm -hmm. and i think first you have to identify that it has become a problem okay. mm -hmm. first you have to recognize that it is becoming or has become a problem and what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And that's something that, oh I'm sorry oh, Justine, no. that's something that you can see a person that can can see another individual with the naked eye that seemingly has an addiction Okay. but until the individual mm -hmm. makes the admission or the acknowledgement and that's where the, 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 the threshold to help really mm -hmm. comes available when the individual can say, okay, I think that this might be a problem. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we say, uh, people might say, I think we ha I have a problem, mm -hmm. but it's just a fleeing thought as soon as you mm -hmm. can able to get one more mm -hmm. dollar, one more drug, one more bet, mm -hmm. whatever right. your addiction mm -hmm. might be at that time. Yeah. Yeah. It's no longer at the forefront. Absolutely. It's no longer be, you're no longer looking at a problem, you're fulfilling the need. Mm -hmm. Well, I had an eating disorder, so I understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand. I was there with you, okay? I was there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I started purging mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I started gaining weight. Mm -hmm. But then somehow I couldn't stop purging. Mm -hmm. Now, after some work, we got the, the, the eating disorder under control. Mm -hmm. But there are some things that even now I have to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. I'll skip meals in a heartbeat, okay? If I've skipped two meals, I have to have a talk with me. I have to say, <laughs> what's going on, Stephanie, that you skipped two meals? Because for, for me, it won't be just two meals. Mm -hmm. 
it'll be a hundred mil. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have to sit there. So you have to, I have to stay guard. So all addictions to me would appear to be like that. Or if I sit down and I eat till my stomach hurts, that's another sign. Mm -hmm. Because I can't do that once. If I do it once, I have to say, okay, Stephanie, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, you ate your food, everybody else's food. What's happening? Mm -hmm. What are you, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So do people do those things? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Absolutely. The, the adverse consequences of addiction, whether it be gambling, or what, it, it doesn't always have to be physical. Right. Okay. Or the symptoms don't always have to uh, occur in a particular sequence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a gambling addiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on the outside, the addict appears fine. Right. But the finances are suffering. Mm -hmm. There's um, pressure from the spouse mm -hmm. or children or um, agencies, etc. Then um, stress mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. happens. And with the stress, become, uh, there's a weight loss. And uh, with the weight loss, there's a, a crash in uh, self-esteem and self-image. Mm -hmm. Now, Well, this is the same weight loss <laughs> that the crack addict experienced. <laughs> okay. Right? Okay. This is the same feeling of um, low self-esteem and low right. self-worth right. that the, the alcoholic is feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? But now he's getting his in the bar on the street corner, and you're getting yours at the boat. But the sequence of events was a little different. Maybe the crack addict lost weight long before you did. Right. You know, but the stress led to your weight loss. And so addiction seems to manifest itself one way or the, up or the other in similar ways. Yes. Okay. And this is why you cannot, it's <coughs> not easy to uh, diagnose it right. uh, because of that sequence of mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. And by the time you see it, and they go, what is wrong with you? So you just break out crying. Stage. I just lose all my money every week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, right. Right. And but then point of permission. Excuse me. When you say, uh, Tony, that sometimes with any addiction, whether it be gambling or drug, you can cover when you're not able to gamble, so and you're feeling bad, and you, your spirits are low, you might can afford some vodka. Mm -hmm. So now you start substituting. Oh, somebody will addiction. give you some vodka. Don't yes. have to worry about afford yeah. it. Yes. People will give you alcohol be because that's socially Not acceptable. That's, right. <laughs> that's, right. yeah. that's socially acceptable. So it. they will give I'll you a drink. Yeah. We've been programmed to believe we can't even have a party right. without having yeah. a drink. That's so right. Yeah, it definitely. Right. One of the things I was thinking about that we can't miss is, is uh, a, when you define addiction mm -hmm. as mind or mood altering people. Uh, we have to be mindful because you got some people that are truly drugs and you have to be, and it works both ways. How you got some people to come in the room and everything about you change, mm -hmm. you know, for this way. Then you got some people come in the room uh, and everything lights up. You're like, oh my God, and that's the same thing. So you have to be mindful of people too because mm -hmm. you have some very addictive uh, people. So be mindful. Be, and when we talk about addiction, the whole gamut, that's one of the things that we really talk about is how addictive people can be. Mm. I think that's what keeps us in abusive and toxic relationships Absolutely. is because we have an addiction to that person uh, and not to be too raw but sometimes it's just addiction to sex with that person Absolutely. or with the financial Absolutely. situation well-being well mm -hmm. with that person and then we become addicted to that so we put up with all kind of abuse right. physical mm -hmm. abuse mental mental emotional yeah. and we just we just bear it out yeah. and yeah. those can lead to other things because you can't go through that long without having something to right. make you feel yeah. better because mm -hmm. your self-esteem mm -hmm. plummets mm -hmm. you lose weight because of the stress mm -hmm. yes. and you got to have something to pick you up and yeah. we know our own standards right to keep that thing going yeah. right I, th I think that sometimes it's just and I go back to the the spiritual void because we are always looking for something on the outside of us to make us feel better. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I really believe that the spiritual component of the relationship with God, with the individual, is so key. And that goes back to raising the teenagers and different things. I think the very fiber of the foundation on which we have built our families as a, um, not as a nation, but as, as just African Americans, this it has, it, we have, we have just totally just discarded that we don't have dinner together anymore mm -hmm. and I know it's because of social economic things mama has to work and dad has to work and 
if there's no dad then mom has to work double but we really need to get back to the way that our mothers 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 raised us uh, because I think that that was that was the key and there was always God God was always the driving force that mm -hmm. whatever come what may that we could make it following these principles mm -hmm. uh, and and when we stop doing that we start looking for other things relationships mm -hmm. and ice cream and sex and gambling and shoes and mm -hmm. I need to feel better right now right and sometimes we just need to stop and say okay I need to get a source of strength <laughs> that cannot come from a human being that has to come from a power greater than me and you now some things that we do to ourselves will trigger other diseases mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I was wondering earlier and Justin and I had a conversation um, addictions especially addic addictions to substances could mm -hmm. possibly trigger other mental or emotional disorders mm -hmm. yes Thank absolutely you. I mean if you're not if you're not functioning mm -hmm. in the right frame of mind okay uh, then you not only do you become accident prone we can just start there but then some of the behavior, some of the judgments mm -hmm. uh, are distorted. And now you have uh, a rise in teenage pregnancy linked to substance abuse. Mm -hmm. Now you have a rise in uh, sexually transmitted diseases mm -hmm. linked to substance abuse. You see, because the decision making process is distorted with the alcohol or the marijuana. Oh, or whatever. Whatever. And so this is a problem, this is a, a domino effect. Okay. That happens in our communities. And I and while we're talking about this, it just just, just popped in my in my mind is that a lot of the things that are going on in our society today are a direct result of the addiction of power in politics, mm -hmm. in our communities, um, just money just mm -hmm. being the root of a lot of things that's going on today. Uh, I was having a conversation earlier. When I was growing up and going to school, we had uh, community organizations that were set up to keep children from getting caught up right. in the circles of the community where gang banging or using drugs or having sex and these things. And uh, the, the teachers, they cared more. They, I, I just had a, I was just calling out all my teachers' names when I was like yes, five sir. or six years old. You know, I remember because they implanted some stuff in me when I left the household. Okay. And they and they were more caring and loving. And today it's like, I mean, the kids getting killed in school. These people have addictions mm -hmm. with firearms. Okay. But I don't video think games that. lead ah, yes. to a lot of that. We've stuff. got a we've got a caller on the line okay. to hold that thought. Good evening. Technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to the best of us. Call right back. Yes. Let's talk about intervention. We mentioned intervention a little bit. Mm -hmm. When does intervention work? How do you do an intervention? In and what area? Right, in with, what, right. Just uh, <laughs> with the uh, uh, client, with the family member. Okay. Um, intervention, Tony, can you mm -hmm. maybe you can I know expound on that, that the behavior that my teenager is exhibiting is grossly different mm -hmm. from what he was he exhibiting was. before. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the problem is, mm -hmm. okay? And I just know that there's a problem. Say mm -hmm. now he's just sleeping a lot, yes, yes. and then Signs. when he's awake, he's irritable, and mm -hmm. you know, and well, he's not yelling at me because he wouldn't be alive, but he's irritable, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. And you know, and I know that there's a problem. But, but mm -hmm. that's when the intervention takes place. It's like we talked about when you're monitoring. Uh, and this does not just have to apply to just kids, but any situation, like okay. I say, that may have a problem in terms of addiction. When you're monitoring that, you notice change. And when you notice change, that's when the intervention begins. Okay. And it may be a small thing, and if you notice the difference, then that's when you address it. Because oftentimes, we'll let the little things go. We'll let them go, and we won't address them. Mm -hmm. And what happens is all those little things become this big thing. Mm -hmm. So intervention can happen at any point you see change. And it may just be a conversation okay. about the change. Minister Lee mentioned um, earlier about going back to uh, the way things were. Uh, Can I get you to hold? This sure. is this is uncanny. That's we right. have a caller on the line Great. in the exact same place. Good mm -hmm. evening. Good evening. Thank you for calling in. You have a question for the panel? Uh, yes. Um, 
I so agree to so much you're being said about um, the addiction. And my question is, when there's a a family that is addicted and and engrossed with children, young children, seven, eleven, thirteen, how do you handle that? Hmm. Minister Lee uh, uh, mentioned again, I'm going back to that piece about uh, the way the family used to be. Mm -hmm. We have seen a lot of families that way, a lot of communities that way, where, you know, it's from one house to the next, where everybody's using. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, there isn't a one size fits all type of cure. But one of the approach, the one of approach that I know that works, is that um, uh, we need uh, the family needs support, mm -hmm. yes. um, whether it be professionals, extended family, et cetera, mm -hmm. support. Nice story, yeah. And then um, the target is to reach one member mm -hmm. of the family at a time, mm -hmm. yes. because when the when when the one member gains success or freedom from mm -hmm. the, from addiction, it is motivational for others because one of the things about addiction is particularly when you're in the grips of it is no one wants to be there mm -hmm. no right. no one said I, you know what little Johnny I want to grow up to be an addict mm -hmm. that's not the case so when they see uh, hope mm -hmm. in that family system uh, they start to ask questions how did you get there okay right good yeah. we've so got another caller oh, no. good evening <laughs> hi how are you we're great Great. Um, when I was calling in, I was listening to you talking about the addiction. And just say that you've been into this recovery for years and years and years, okay? And all of a sudden, you decide that you really look at the whole picture and you find out that you talked about being in abusive relationships, mm -hmm. but what about just a woman or a man just being totally working a program doing what the steps tell them to do, but yet and still you, you find this loneliness in you. Mm -hmm. And you, you stop doing cocaine, you stop drinking alcohol, but yet and still you pick up another addiction and it's gambling, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So how do you feel that void? Mm -hmm. After you have been around the meetings, after you have shared with the people in the meeting about what you're going through, well, I believe that it's something missing within that person, and they're filling the void with the riverboat. It's something in their life that's missing, um, and they need, they have a need to feel good. But like drugs, the riverboat will take you on up, down, uh, down. up, it will mm -hmm. lift you up, but when you lose all your money, it'll bring you down. So, it, uh, again, it is an addiction, and how... I would think that you could uh, address that would be with the same program that you use for alcohol and drugs. Absolutely. You know, I when I have I have some severe problems. I'm incredibly <laughs> twisted. I'm surprised people like me. Um, <laughs> I journal, mm -hmm. and I never appreciated the value of it until I went through um, sexual molestation and multiple suicide attempts. I was at a point where any day I didn't con didn't contemplate suicide was a good day. Mm -hmm. I journaled. I started to write down exactly what I was feeling. And journaling was safe because I didn't have to tell anybody because mm -hmm. I had this great exterior, right? Mm -hmm. But what I began to find was a pattern in what I was Absolutely. writing. Mm -hmm. What you're missing will identify itself. It will introduce itself to you if you give it some time. And what I found missing is what uh, Reverend Lee talked about mm -hmm. was a spirituality that I could live daily. Mm -hmm. And yeah. sometimes with um, when you still find yourself in a emptiness and a void, 
It can be something as simple as uh, some sort of chemical imbalance. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need to talk to a health professional mm -hmm. because it's definitely something that you cannot do alone and you may need a sounding board or another uh, person in assistance that is in that arena that right. can help you with those things. So it's always good for therapy or counseling mm -hmm. and certainly uh, the City of Chicago offers many services that those things are almost based on your mm -hmm. income, a sliding, right. scale, sliding scale, so you can seek those <coughs> items. So a lot of times it is simply yes, just not mm -hmm. the right mix of vitamins, the not mm -hmm. eating Absolutely. the right stuff, mm -hmm. because if you eat things that your body can't tolerate, it'll make you feel bad. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we have another caller on the line. Good evening. Uh, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. How are you guys doing? Uh, I just had two quick comments. First of all, I would like to say, um, as regards to the crack epidemic, it's hard to treat those people because those people, some people do it a lot and some people do it a little, just like cigarettes. Some people smoke two packs a day, some people right. smoke one pack a day. So it's hard to treat different people because di different people got different sets of problems. And, and, and it, it, it's like a big circle, like the brother said, it's a domino effect. Secondly, with the kids in school, you eat, you can go to the metro and you can smell a metro. The metro is reeking a reefer. Like, mm -hmm. they were doing this before school. When I'm, I'm like 15 years removed from high school, and it wasn't nothing like that when I was there. These kids is half before school, after school, in the middle of school. Exactly. It's wild. <laughs> it's no control. It's a domino effect. And if you want to talk about the one issue, you can't because there's it's so many issues revolving it that made this issue what it is, if mm -hmm. you guys could feel my point. So Absolutely. it's like it's like you need six hours to really do this show. But <laughs> okay. This, Thank you. I do respond to that. Thank you. That's why prevention is so important. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk yeah, about prevention yeah. again. But you were making a point before, and I said, hold that thought. So let's get back to that thought. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I lost the thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we have another caller on the line. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? We're good. great. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. I'm listening. Uh, well, listening and looking at the panel, and I'm a 53-year-old black male, African-American man, and it is my experience with this crack cocaine, and I don't know if anybody else knows, but, and, I, and I can't help but notice that all of you look like uh, a Democratic committee or something that's ready to go into the chopping block and solve this issue of addiction wow. and how I wish that it were so because again it is my experience that the crack and the cocaine are totally two different things mm -hmm. my awareness tells me that when I was an addict using cocaine that it was all right to use cocaine moderately. Reason why I'm saying that, and, and don't get me wrong, I don't want uh, the listeners and viewers to think that it's ever right to use drugs, but I mean that since history teaches us that when the drug was first discovered, it was also sought out to be an elixir, and it was put into Coca-Cola, effect mm -hmm. and everybody was falling in love with this stuff but now also it's the pharmaceutical it's our local anesthetics you know what I'm saying when we get a cut on us and they need to sew us up or something like this they in, in, inject us with some kind of uh, derivative of, of the coca plant uh, nolocaine or you know arcane or, or something to, to, to lessen the, the pain Okay, we can address. Well, let's address abuse. Okay, first. let's address abuse. Let's do that. Yeah, because that's important that, that you understand it. And when you start talking about substance and you talk about the fact that it's used as medication for this, for that, for that. And it's important that people understand the difference in abuse. Those things are good for those reasons. But when you begin to abuse things, and a lot of things in moderation is okay. But it's the abuse factor that comes in a lot I of mean, times. I mean, too many Coca-Colas will kill you. Yeah, too many of anything. Too many of anything will, will kill, kill you. you. And then the separation piece. Um, 
we have to be careful with that too because even with cocaine, crack, heroin, marijuana, alcohol, we look at the fact that they're all drugs. So we don't do that separation okay. piece. You know what I'm saying? Because then people start thinking that, that this drug okay. is less okay. dangerous. And the thing is what, what happens is when your mind is altered, that's the danger. Marijuana, alcohol, or any Anything. of these drugs cause you to think different from what you would normally think is dangerous. So we, we have to make sure that we do, do not begin to separate substance okay. and abuse. And abuse. Mm -hmm. Or, and I think we make light of the cause of addictions, and mm -hmm. we need to get back to that. Because Absolutely. if we can fix the cause of addictions, then you wouldn't be smoking marijuana, drinking alcohol, gambling, eating too much, <laughs> and all that other stuff. We've got another caller on the line. Good evening. Okay, Thank you guys, for everybody on the panel, you guys are just awesome, especially the hostess. I totally <laughs> agree, and I think that's a really good idea about what you said about putting everything in journals, and then eventually it'll come out. I think um, I used to write in a journal a long time ago, and I think maybe I'm going to get back to doing that. But I have a question for you. Uh, you said that uh, depression could be a chemical imbalance or something like that, mm -hmm. and the city of Chicago has resources where you can go if you don't have insurance. And, and things, um, is there, um, do you guys have a number or any um, contact number where we can get these resources? You know, you can contact the mayor's office. Yes. And mm -hmm. the mayor's office can direct you to the right department and give you the numbers for that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so very much, and thanks for having this program. This is very knowledgeable. You're well, welcome. You. Okay. Good night. Good night. Now, did you, you forgot your point, but you were making another point. We're going to get that point out. The other point I remember okay. was about prevention. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, the, um, the caller previous to, previous to this young lady um, um, brought up some points, and, and I understood his perspective. Mm -hmm. Prevention, however, uh, uh, is where we need to focus our energies uh, uh, and, 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 and efforts. Because uh, one, one of the callers talked about getting on the metro train, and it's not like it used to be, and the, how the children are and all of that. Well, uh, part of that, as, as this uh, addiction thing has become an epidemic, uh, we have been fighting the drug, the, the war on drugs. We have been fighting um, uh, with recovery and treatment, mm -hmm. et cetera. Uh, but the young people have been kind of falling uh, through the cracks and by the time I've met, I haven't met anyone who said, I remember the day I crossed over from social use to addictive okay. behavior. Mm. Mm. And so when we can start educating people about the possibilities of that crossover and, and warning signs, et cetera, mm -hmm. and, 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 and uh, uh, the physical uh, uh, responses. To, to drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex, et cetera. Mm -hmm. When we can start educating people, we have more young people who are out there um, armed with this education. Mm -hmm. um, they can make more healthier or educated choices. Mm -hmm. And so prevention is important in this factor. Mm -hmm. I agree. I have open discussions. I have a 23-year-old and a 21-year-old. And I have open discussions. And I want to let all parents know that I still right today when they come home from college I still snoop and I look in their things because <laughs> I want to know exactly what is going on with my children but we do have open discussions I want to know what they are dealing with I don't want to get away from their issues mm -hmm. because they are totally different than mine and they have to go out in society I'm concerned when my son gets in a car that's 21 years old mm -hmm. that's in college that does not do drugs and he's driving down the street and I'm concerned about how he's feeling going in and out of stores and mm -hmm. the look and all of those things the dynamics of the body language so it's good to have open discussions about how your day was today how's your day What's going on? Simple oh, things God, like I missed that. that. We have a mm -hmm. caller on the line. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. How you doing? Good. Great. My name is Tonika, and I just wanted to ask you all were talking about prevention, mm -hmm. and I wanted to know what the different types of addiction that you were talking about as far as the drugs or if it's food or shopping. Do you think that all prevention is the same? Do, we, do you take the same steps for any addiction, or is there different types of prevention? 
that go along or it's just mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the seventh twelfth step program is that a universal thing that can be applied to any addiction I believe I believe that it's twelve if step. you would google just twelve step programs you would be surprised yes. what would show up Yes. I did that the other day in preparation for this show, mm-hmm. and I got about 300 wow. mm-hmm. 12-step programs. Mm-hmm. There's a 12-step program for whatever ails you, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, so, but there are lots of ways, and I think here we've discussed the importance of prevention, mm-hmm. education. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the very first step, keeping mm-hmm. the lines of communications open, yeah. uh, because it's, I think it's probably easier there to give someone the information than it is to convince someone they have a problem. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because, I mean, how many times have somebody told you you had a, like a, a you know, take it away from this topic, but they say, you know, you have a problem getting along with people. Mm-hmm. What do you say? Mm-hmm. No, I don't. Right. <laughs> Why you say that? Why you say denial. that? Right. right. You just straight to denial. Right. 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 So if, if you told somebody, you know what, you've got a problem with alcohol, you've got a problem with gambling, right. mm-hmm. they say, no, I don't. No. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Something I like to do. That's uh, (laughs) uh, real prevalent that prevention has to start with self. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to be tired of the place that you're in. That's true. And surrender. Absolutely. Well, yeah, that's to the fact when you only when you can get help. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't admit that you got a problem and recognize and recognize that you need some help, I mean, somebody can tell twenty, a hundred, like you just said, a hundred people can tell you got a problem. Until you admit that you have co- and become willing to change. Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if you're not yeah. ready to do anything about it, all the 12 steps and programs on Google will not make any sense to you and will not be of any help to you if you as a person is not ready to take that first step. Uh, we've got another caller with mm-hmm. that. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Good Hi. evening. How are you? I'm fine. I'd like to send my blessings to everyone on the panel. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, including Senator Barack Obama. He's not there, but my blessings to him, too. All right. And I'd like to ask everyone on the panel, could the, a show of hands of uh, everyone who's been addicted on the panel, who has, who's fighting addiction? <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to take the lead on that one. Honey, we are all addicted to something. something. That's right. <laughs> okay. Every, and that's that is one of the things that I find sort of <laughs> hilarious is we still as a society yeah. want to segment mm-hmm. addictions. Right. We are all you'd be surprised how many very well put together people cannot stand to be in a room by themselves. Mm-hmm. They are addicted to other people. Cell phone addictions. Yeah. You know, people can't leave Internet. home now without talking on the telephone. Yeah. Yeah. We are a, every we are addicted okay. to okay. everybody's addicted to something. Yeah. We have another caller. Good, Good evening. evening. My name is Philip. Hi, Hi Philip. And um, really, what I wanted to say, I asked y'all just answered everything I wanted to say because I just wanted to let the people know that the twelve steps and the twelve traditions apply to everything if there's any kind of addiction. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Thank you. I think one of the things you have to do is the reason there's so many programs because every individual is different and you have to look at modifications in, in terms of a trail strip program one of the things that they talk about is the individual and that's right. important we got a program that deals. we have a harm reduction program that I've been working with now for about the last four years called safety counts this program deals with strictly harm reduction so what mm-hmm. we do is it's like five core elements that you use to get to a particular place okay. and that's the same thing it can be applied to any um, a, I want to say addictions, but any type of um, harm reduction programs where you look at what the problem is and what's the steps it'll take. And again, everybody, when you start talking about uh, what is it that you want, they say get clean. But they don't look at the steps in between right, that right. you have to take to get to the end result. And right. I think that happens in all addictions. You have to start looking at what steps can be, what steps you need to take and then start to apply them. Not the end result, because a lot of times that's what we call long-term goals. Mm-hmm. And it's the hardest to get to. You know, when you start talking about, I want to go to treatment. Well, what, what needs to happen? You need to make a phone call. You need to get on the list. Whatever it is that needs to happen. Whatever it right. Step by step, step by step. And that's why we have so many programs, because each individual is different. And you have to look at what program and modify. Twelve mm-hmm. steps are beautiful but you have to modify them to each individual. And that goes with food, oh, that goes true. with right. Alcoholics Anonymous, that goes with gambling or whatever it is, whatever Over problem you have. Anonymous? Absolutely, yeah. yes. We, we got them all. We have a caller on the line. Good evening. 
Hello? Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. We're fine. That's good. I'm calling. The question that I have is I have a daughter, and uh, she is actually going through some things herself with peer pressure and all. And, Ms. Jacqueline, I know that you spoke about you were going through some things, and you were writing in your journal as well about those emotions. And, actually, I'm a snooping mother, and I That's found good. those things that she did right. And I just want to know how do you talk to your teen when they're afraid to listen to you and hear what you have to say or they're afraid of your reaction. And I know if you talk to them, you can prevent other things mm -hmm. from happening. So before it goes into any of those things, mm -hmm. how do I get to her to talk to her so it won't progress to those things from trying to feel a void of not quote unquote <clears throat> fitting in? One of the things that I, I, I encourage parents and people, uh, when you do find out some information and you have any kind of concerns, uh, so that you won't be so overwhelmed, it's always good to pray. Always good to pray. That is a big resource because then it is off me and it's God, I need your help. And then it's always good for me, uh, in my experience, I've always had an elder in my family, my mother, my sisters, that I can kind of get their experience and their feedback mm -hmm. because they certainly, my mother has raised nine mm -hmm. children, my sisters have children, so I get other people's feedback that love me and that love the child okay. and that has had experience in that area so it's always good to kind of and it's right in the midst of your immediate circle there is someone that loves your daughter just like you that cares for her and you can always get the experience of an elder or a pastor or a uh, Sunday school teacher you can always start right there and I'm sure if you do that then you'll be well on your way. Mm -hmm. Any other suggestions? Um, yeah, I you have boys. Yeah, and I, I, would, I had to be creative because when they would bring me information in order not to reveal my source, I had to be creative in terms of my approaches. Mm -hmm. But I, I also found that sometimes the direct approach was the best approach That's depending true you know, on circumstances and consequences. So that was one of the things that I look at it was the direct approach depending on the information I found out and what the consequences could be to them. So mm -hmm. A lot of times I would preface my conversations with my son with um, there's some things that we need to talk about mm -hmm. because I'm worried mm -hmm. about you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love you. I don't want anything to happen to you. And then I would say, now you know, uh, we had this joke between us about our best thinking. Mm -hmm. I came up with this stuff with my best thinking, so I might be way off base, right. but humor me and let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. And we would talk about it that way. It's because they don't want you to be worried about them. Mm -hmm. So that sort of gets their attention, and you're not accusing, you know, mm -hmm. you're just kind of opening up the lines of communication. Yeah. We've got another caller on the line. Good mm -hmm. evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, and yourself? Great. I'm responding to uh, one of the panelists said that uh, he didn't know of anybody that could say, well, on this particular day I crossed over to addiction. Uh, I used to have a really uh, big problem with marijuana back in the late 70s. And uh, I didn't really, I can't really say I, on this particular day I crossed over to addiction, but I do know that uh, I remember my red flag. Mm -hmm. And when I thought back on it, and it helped me to pull out of it. Mm. And certainly prayer helped me a lot, but my red flag was that I accepted this in my life as my friend, uh, my uh, stress reliever, you know, mm -hmm. it was uh, my coping mechanism is mm -hmm. what I'm saying, so I made a place in my life for this thing. As opposed mm. to using better methods to deal with life, I used this chemical, this, mm -hmm. this drug, and it was marijuana, it was light, you know, nobody really said anything really bad about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasted a lot of time, basically. But I think that's a red flag. If, you know, the viewers that are, mm -hmm. are, li are listening may have already experienced it, or they may experience it, where they find that they're seeing this thing as something to help them, you know, aid, something to hold on to. And it's really going to take you down. <laughs> I, I think it robs one of drive. It's a real stealer of drive. You'll have all kind of goals. Mm -hmm. But what it takes for you to get up and make it happen for yourself, that won't be there. You want to chill. 
So thank you. You're mm -hmm. welcome. Thank you. That's sort of what you touched on. If you needed to do something, whatever mm -hmm. it was, before, before you got to have it, you could do something. Yeah, that's else. a red flag. Yeah. That's yeah. A, that's a red flag. Yeah. Yeah. You've just crossed over, crossed whether over. you know it or not. You've yeah. just, crossed just crossed over. over. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think we recognize it as crossing over mm -hmm. because if we had, and I speak of we in the third person mm -hmm. and everyone, um, you wouldn't. If everyone says, "Oh, it's a red flag," I just <laughs> crossed over from a, 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 a social, from a social to an abuser. Now I'm chronically addicted. Then we wouldn't do it. That's I don't true. Think That's nobody true. Really, we think we're easing through. Yeah, we think we're easing the, through. And you stay in denial. And, well, and that's the biggest part of addiction is denial. Okay, right. we've got like two minutes. Let's talk about denial a little bit. Unless Tony's got something yeah. burning. Get it out. <laughs> Get it out. I just, I, I, I don't fully accept that idea that if you recognize the red flag, mm -hmm. then you will, uh, you, you, you wouldn't do it. Maybe. By the time you recognize the red flag, <laughs> you're uh, caught in the grip, so okay. to speak. And denial certainly plays a part. But denial helps you fight against uh, um, surrender. Mm -hmm. yes. And so yeah. that's an issue. I okay. don't, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so by the time you see the red flag, flag. it's too There's late. It's too late. Well, okay, it's too late. We've got a caller on the line. Ah, technical difficulty. Cool. Hi, Ms. Oh, Wilson. Oh, no. Hi, how are you doing? I thought I lost you. Fine. Uh, I'd just like to thank you for hosting such shows as these. And I'd like to thank all the panel members. Uh, for uh, speaking on such an important issue that affects uh, African Americans. Um, you talked about a lot of things such as parenting and prevention, and I'm just very proud to be sitting here watching each and every one of you all. And I hope that you continue to have shows like this on a regular basis. We will. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. You know you're right, because by the time you realize you've got a problem with handling your money, you owe everybody in town. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> that's right. It is too late. <laughs> and, and if we the, looked the at it, that's the problem. Okay. It wouldn't be. Okay. Problem. One thing from everybody that people either should be aware of, can do, or take notice of, one gem. It's a spiritual void. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it needs to be addressed at some point through spiritual matters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Quickly. Just be vigilant. Okay. I would just say that um, write and start little and work your way up. Okay. To be aware is to be alive. Okay. Right. Pray and ask for God's help. All I right. I want to thank you all for joining thank me. Thank you. This thank has been an absolutely us. fantastic show. And as you know, my personal goal is to get information to the community about things that are happening in our community that absolutely. we can take control of. Because we have so much power within our own hands and minds mm -hmm. that we absolutely can really just create our own prosperity. Mm -hmm. As I always say on this show, remember that you are packed with all the power that you ever need, and there's enough spirit everywhere you are. And stop believing that miracles are working everywhere but in your life, okay? Because they're working in your life too. This has been a sip of inspiration. Again, I'm Stephanie Wilson, your host, and I have had an absolutely fantastic time. Thank you. Thank you. Sweetest lyrics that I ever heard There's a message in the songs of words Tomorrow is another day Living is the only way Tomorrow's gonna ever come Listen to the words of the song Everything